over 14 centuries, millions of Muslims from all over the world have made the pilgrimage to Mecca, the birthplace of Islam. In carrying out this obligation, they fulfill one of the five pillars of Islam or a fundamental religious duty of a believer. Yearning for God is what hearts stand for from the time you leave your home till your return. It teaches you your basic journey that you are already undertaking as a human being living on earth, that you belong to God and to Him is your return. And Hajj from each and every facet of its practices teaches you to turn your attention away from yourself. You are nothing. You came with nothing, you will live with nothing, and you are what you are because of God. It teaches you to humble yourself amongst fellow creation. It humbles you to look forward in serving humanity, because in serving humanity is in essence serving Allah, who has created humanity, who has created everything. Mulana Abbas Mkize fulfilled his yearning and desire to perform the Hajj recently by also serving his parents. This sacred journey became more special and cherished as his aging parents, Abdul Haq Abdul Rahman and Zuleika Jun Mkize, accompanied him. Growing up as early generation Muslims in the township was made easier by remaining true to their faith and maintaining a close family bond. Well, I grew up in a family of God-reliant parents. And I have always been motivated by the fact that Throughout my childhood, I was taught to rely on Allah. And every single thing that happens in my surroundings is directly decreed, not only in books and theoretically. I am actually a product of a practical Islam that I have actually experienced from parents that are and have accepted Islam for its objectives and its teachings. My journey in Islam, I embraced Islam 1960. Then I got married 1970. Then I took my children to Madrasa because my aim was that I want to please Allah so that all my children, they must they must be more learned. The journey was very difficult because we were in the townships and he was the second Muslim in the township and where there was no place where you could go for learning and knowledge. Fortunately, he had books that I could teach myself from them. I came to learn that if you want any freedom of everything, you can find it in Islam. And then that's why I became so interested in it. Maybe other people took me like a, a, a fighter. I was not fighting, but I was fighting for what I've learned, that this is a freedom that I can get. It's where I can, I can exercise my right. There's equality in Islam. So that's what made me to, to, to love Islam that now I am, can be myself without fearing anybody else, but to fear Allah only. Being a Muslim means you concentrate to your Creator, you listen what the, your Creator says, because when you read the Quran, it tells you that what Allah wants. And so you play on those gui guidelines until everything comes right. Muslims trace the recorded origins of the divinely prescribed pilgrimage to the Prophet Abraham or Ibrahim, who together with Ishmael or Ismail built the Kaaba or the House of God. The Hajj also honors the life of Hagar or Hajar and her son Ishmael. For the elderly Mkizes, performing the Hajj at least once in their lifetime was an unfulfilled fantasy until their son took them to Mecca to perform the sacred journey to the house of Allah. Now I never was able to get classes of being taught about Hajj, but with my own, with the knowledge that I get from the books, you are going there into the house of Allah. You are going to 
to see the holy Gaba all the time when I was facing, I was facing the Gaba, to see the Gaba to me and to to see the people, because I knew that when I was going to circumambulate to make tawaf, uh, for me, Allah was teaching me that now Islam, there's no white, there's no black, there's no rich, there's no poor. We all one, doing the same thing just for the pleasure of Allah. When I hear that I'm going to Mecca, I couldn't believe that it was me. And I couldn't believe that I can go to Mecca. Because I used to see in the pictures when they are talking about Mecca. But that day, it was my blessed day when I, I entered the plane. Then I was sure that I'm going there. And to me, it was a wonderful experience. When my son told me about it, and then when we went to, 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 to prepare our visas, I only realized that this was real, because to me, it, there was like doubt that it can be me. And then everything Aladella made it so easy for us. And then when I was at the airport, now realizing that really I am going there, then I was very touched that Allah has been very, very merciful to me to give me this privilege of going to be his guest in his house. And then at that time, I was not thinking of anything else, but I was just thinking of the, the blessing and the grace of Allah. Well, Hajj to me is an opportunity for in, that comes sometimes once in a lifetime of a Muslim to present himself in the house and the city of Allah to say to him that I'm here as your slave presenting and supplicating myself entirely to Allah and that is what the journey of Hajj was to me. The Hajj pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca takes place each year between the 8th and 13th days of Dil Hijjah, the 12th month of the Muslim lunar calendar. When pilgrims undertake the Hajj journey, they follow in the footsteps of millions before them. The Hajj is a once-in-a-lifetime obligation upon male and female adults whose health and means permitted. For Mulana Abbas Nkize and his elderly parents, the strenuous journey was driven by their yearning and desire to visit the house of Allah and to fulfill his commandment. The greatest priority was not even my own Hajj. As I was hoping that inshallah sometime in future I can always perform Hajj. But as the age of my parents, the signs of old age was setting in, then we felt that there was a need that we prioritize that while they still have some strength, let them perform Hajj. And it came with that privilege for me to then accompany them together in, with performing my own Hajj and serve them through that journey of Hajj. When I, I was about to go, we didn't have nothing. I also asked myself, how are we going to to stand for ourselves in Mecca. But my son, he, he said, don't be worried, my, my dad, we will, he will feed the bill somewhere so that we can finish the journey. Before or after going to Mecca to perform the Hajj pilgrimage, pilgrims also visit Prophet Muhammad's mosque in the city of Medina, peace be upon him the second holiest city in Islam. Here, the Prophet lies buried in a simple grave under the green dome of the mosque. The visit to Medina is not obligatory, as it is not part of the Hajj, but the city, which welcomed the Prophet when he migrated there from Mecca, is rich in moving memories and historical sites that are reminiscent of him as a prophet and statesman. First and foremost, entering Medina comes with one's knowledge that you have of our beloved prophet peace be upon him the kind of a man he was 
the kind of an example that he was and the inspiration to date throughout various nations of the world he is still the reference in various actions that we do and for that moment arriving in the city of your, of our prophet to say that now here am I as a guest of that city it brought a whole mix of emotions that eventually here am I to come and pay tribute and my respect to my prophet and uh, there is no words that can describe that feeling when you are in that city of the people who were the flag bearers and the foundation and um, uh, the, the roots of this entire perfect religion of Islam. Before entering the borders of the holy city of Mecca, men must wear the ikhram, which is a white seamless garment made up of two pieces of cloth or toweling. One covers the body from the waist to ankle and the other is thrown over the shoulder. Both Prophet Abraham and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them, wore this garb. Women generally wear a simple white or black dress and a head covering, but not a veil. The iram is a symbol of purity and the renunciation of evil and mundane matters. It also indicates the equality of all people in the eyes of God. Medina is the city of the Prophet, but he was a Prophet of Allah. And when we arrive now in Makkah, in our ihram, and now we are drawing nearer and nearer to now seeing the actual house of Allah, you can then start beginning the kind of emotions surrounding that anticipation to actually make one's presence in that house of Allah among the millions of people. In my heart and my eyes were flowing that Ya Allah this is me I, I, I am nothing, but you've made me something today to wash off all the bad things that were in me. And to see the, the Kaaba for the first time for me, I, I cannot explain the feeling that I had. It, it, because I always saw it on pictures, but now seeing it in, in reality, then to me, I, I, I don't have any words to explain the feeling that I had. When I was I was in the Ikhram. That's where I could see that my creator, he invited me. I wasn't supposed to be there. Because the way we were making prayers, the way we were circulating the Kaaba, the way we were running, running up and down, representing Bibi Haka, all those, those were wonderful experiences. I had a feeling that anybody, any, any, anyone who didn't saw that, he must just go and see that. And eventually, when you see that house of Allah, with hundreds and thousands of people supplicating, all dressed in one uniform of ihram, that signifies that we are nothing and we have come to demonstrate that to our Creator that we are but slaves in front of Him. Those emotions that surround that moment are indescribable. The excitement to be in the house of Allah, for me it was more than anything else in the world. I was there making tawaf, crying, there was no more excitement now, it was just tears of joy that Allah, I, today I'm a guest. Um, uh, I'm succumbulating there with everyone, reading, you know, humming with everyone in, in the Kaaba. To me, I just felt so holy. I felt like I was a newborn. Thank you.
During the second day of Hajj, pilgrims congregate on the plains of Arafat for the wukuf or the standing, which is the central rite of the Hajj. As they congregate here, the pilgrim stance at gathering reminds them of the Day of Judgment. Some of them gather at the Mount of Mercy, where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, delivered his unforgettable farewell sermon. In Arafah, being a place that forms part of the obligated sites to be in for your Hajj to be declared valid, in the midst of the crowds from all over the globe, in the place where our Prophet made his final farewell address or speech to his companions. And you are in that environment amongst all of these people who are the products of that message that was given by our Prophet that those amongst you who are present today take this gospel of Allah take this way of Allah to those who are not present today and when you see people responding to that call of the Prophet then in millions and millions every year that can only humble you to the fact that really God is as great as we utter these words five times a day in our prayers that Allah is the greatest. I just remembered the Prophet Sallallahu last sermon when he said there was no Arab over an Arab, no white over a black, you are all equal except in piety now that to me now i just saw it in reality that this is what a uh, rasulullah was meant because now we are all there we are all equal there was no one better than the other we are all equal and then i was striving to get higher stage of my faith that now i've reached this place that not everybody is lucky to reach so i have to who work on my spirituality more than ever before. Arafah means to me I was in heaven. I have a feeling that I was in heaven. It's maybe I might meet God when, I de when I'm there. Because when we ride up to the staircases, I told myself I want to go right up to to the top, but because we were plenty and so I had to give the other people a chance also. Before daybreak on the third day, pilgrims move en masse to an area called Mina. There, they cast seven pebbles each at three white pillars, as they remember the story of Satan's attempt to persuade Abraham to disregard God's commandment to sacrifice his son. There is actually no physical shaitan, it is a symbol where people undertaking this journey, resembling Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, in this pelting, that a Muslim does not allow the Satan and the Shaitan to dominate his life because we are people of Allah and we are people of cleanliness in every perspective and where filth of our physical lives and filth of our physical treatment as human beings when any kind of evil that advances the life of a Muslim this is an attitude of a Muslim where the Satan is pelted so that the purity of Allah can dominate once again in our lives and not that of the influences of Shaitan. To my own understanding, personal understanding, was now to go and pelt the Shaitan, was not going to pelt the wall there, was to pelt um, oppression, was to pelt racism, was to pelt all what Shaitan is doing to, to human beings. I was pelting him for that. Following the casting of the pebbles, most pilgrims sacrifice a goat, sheep or camel. They give the meat to the poor or in some cases, keep a small portion for themselves. 
This rite is associated with Abraham's readiness to sacrifice his son in accordance with God's wish. On this day, Muslims around the world share the same happiness by performing individual sacrifices in a worldwide celebration of Eid ul Adha, or the Festival of Sacrifice. When Sayyidina Ibrahim was commanded to slaughter his son Ismail alayhi salam, that was in essence not slaughtering the animal per se. It was to slaughter the love of everything that is sacred and beloved to you in the name of Allah. And that is an action that symbolizes the significance of Allah in the life of a Muslim, where everything now is sacrificed for Allah and nothing else. At this stage, the pilgrims have finished a major part of the Hajj. Men either shave their heads or clip their hair, and women cut off a symbolic lock. This is done as a symbol of humility and purity. The pilgrims then perform their farewell tawaf or circumambulation of the Kaaba. Another and sometimes final rite is the Sa'i or the running. This is a reenactment of a memorable episode in the life of Hagar where she ran back and forth seven times with her infant son Ishmael between two rocky hillocks until she found the sacred water known as Zamzam. You know, walking that Safa Marwa, to me, it was now walking in her footsteps. And then that gave me courage, that gave me strength to believe more in Allah, that Allah, in every situation I can be. Allah Adala is there. In the desert, for a mother, the water just springs up. And then that, for that, I'm very grateful to Allah to have witnessed that. There is a place for us, a high place for us in the eyes of Allah. You know, here now everybody is walking Sarfa to Marwa, men and women. Not only women, but men as well. So it gives us a high status as women. You are the Yandi, you are the Mercy, you are the Rahman Rahim. I feel very deeply, deeply happy because I, I, I had something in my mind that, oh, my son brought me here and very various people who are here, they, they, can, they, they can see and they can relate what Ibrahim, Ibrahim Ali Salah, what was he was doing. And I also came with my child. My son brought me there so that I must experience what is, what is the following of Islam. I, I was fortunate to to perform Hajj with my, my husband and my son. And, and my th son is a learned scholar. If he was in there, we would we'd have missed out a lot of things. Me and, and, and my husband, we would be lost without him because he was there now telling us what to recite. This is how you must do it. This is what you must recite. And um, guiding us all the way. And my husband, to him, he said, even if I could die here, yeah, I'll be, you know, I'll die, I'll have a happy death. I said, Alhamdulillah, if it happens, Alhamdulillah. And then that was the, the joy that we had, that Allah, today we are Hajjis, today we have experienced, you know, this place that we always hear about it, but here we are today. I have never anticipated that I will perform my Hajj with my parents. I have about six brothers and of all of them and all of us this great magnificent responsibility Allah Ta'ala gave it to me to take my parents on this journey but the Almighty made it so easy I also cannot make sense of how it happened for us to go and return without any incidents taking to 
cognizance that at the time both of their health was not okay but they said that the call has come and we are going to fulfill this responsibility come what may we are going to say that Labek we are going to tell our creator that we are coming and it has humbled me a lot that the Almighty used myself as that means to facilitate and make it possible for them also to undertake this significant journey. The lesson is not about the rituals, it's far bigger in the sense of the lives that we live. You are the Yandi, you are the Nasi, you are the Rahman.